me check it out. Sweet water, sweet water, sweet water. Where are you, sweet water? Oh, there it is. Oh, that's only about another 20 miles. Hi, folks. I'm Angelo Viola. Today I'm coming to you from the Lone Star State of Texas, where I'm about to confront and come face to face with one of my greatest fears. You see, as somebody who constantly travels to and from exotic adventure locations, I can tell you that one of the greatest fears that an outdoor enthusiast has to face is becoming a victim to one of Mother Nature's deadly assassins. Whether it's a lion in Africa or a great white off the barrier reef or an Alaskan grizzly, when you venture into their domain, you become fair game. One of the only and few ways to survive these deadly confrontations is to truly and better understand the nature of the beast, so to speak. These aren't times for uncontrolled panic and mass hysteria. For an example, one of the best ways to survive a bear attack is to simply play dead, which means no panic and no hysteria. Well, today I'm going to come face to face and try and better understand the creature that's causing me all my fears. Then on Surviving the Outdoors, we'll catch up with Holly Lovell, who's been there, seen it, and done it all. And this week, she's going to share with us her greatest outdoor challenge. Holly? Hey, Ange, you are absolutely correct. I have been chased by bears, climbed some of the highest mountains, walked some of the hottest deserts, and followed the caribou migration path. But none of these are as challenging as what I'm going to tell you about today. Well, you got my attention, Holly. Now on today's special Off the Beaten Path report, Pete Bowman is bobbing somewhere in the South Pacific with a challenge of his own. Pete? Hey, thanks, Ange. You know, I probably got a chance at my ultimate fishing adventure right now, right here. I'm on the Pacific Ocean, and I'm going after my, probably my favorite game fish that I haven't caught yet in my life, what I want to catch, sailfish. And I am pumped, believe me. Well, buddy, I'm pumped too. We got fear, we got challenge, we got the ultimate adventure. So unplug the phones and get out the popcorn. It's time for this week's Outdoor Journal. Well, are you wondering what my biggest fear has to do with Sweetwater, Texas? Well, you see, my biggest fear happens to be snakes. Ugly, deadly, slithery, venomous killers. And Sweetwater, Texas just happens to be the rattlesnake capital of the world. So I thought, what better place to confront my phobia than a place that's literally put itself on the map by having an annual rattlesnake roundup. Originating in 1958, the Sweetwater JC's rattlesnake roundup is officially listed as the largest rattlesnake roundup in the world, drawing over 30,000 curious onlookers from both hemispheres. For most spectators, it's a unique opportunity to get up close to one of nature's most poisonous and dangerous creatures. Venom is the most important byproduct of this rather unusual event. It's sold to medical research centers as the all-important antidote for snake bites. The money raised goes to the handicapped, Special Olympics, MDA, and the Boy Scouts. It's hard to believe that something that's perceived as being so ominous and evil can be responsible for so much goodness. But you know, so far, none of this has done anything for my phobia. I'm still shaking in my boots, but that's all about the change, as we'll see a little bit later on in the program. But first, this week, Surviving the Outdoors. As we mentioned at the beginning of the show, I've had the opportunity to walk the beautiful Tega Moss in northern Quebec and follow a caribou migration. I spent time in the Arctic with Nanooka the North, 
our great white polar bear, and spent countless hours in the blistering heat fishing some of the most exotic species. But I have to tell you, my far most incredible challenge was finding products that were specifically made for women in the outdoors. Whether this be backpacks, boots, or clothing, all of these products we need to find for women. And today I'd like to introduce you to just a few. Why don't we start with the clothing? These shorts are made for walking, hiking, or fishing, which is really unique because if we are hiking, we don't have to remove our backpack if we do have to go to the washroom. They simply pull apart. These pants offer fit and function unheard of for women. A unique design with a female fly, allowing women to answer nature's call without removing it all. Invisible zippers and pull apart layers are employed in each discrete garment. They come in everything from wind pants, light cotton, to camouflage. They've come out with some great things in footwear, bringing them down to a lady's size, which happens to be a lot narrower than what the men's is. So we have the opportunity to take advantage of great footwear for the outdoors. The tread system is absolutely remarkable, and they've actually come out with boots, with steel shanks, with steel toes, and steel heels. This is great for mountain climbing, rock climbing, or just being in the bush where there's a chance that you might have something land on your foot. But you know, one of the most exciting products that's out is a new backpack for women. This backpack is very unique. It's built with a lower center of gravity so that the sleeping bag sits up at the top. The frame unit is actually smaller than what a man's frame unit is. And as we notice, the sleeping bag sits at the bottom on the men's and on the women's it sits up atop, which gives us far more balance. Another very unique item is the fact that all the shoulder straps are padded. Even sporting good manufacturers are coming out with great products for us women in the outdoors. For instance, archery equipment with shorter axle to axle draw lengths and far lighter for us women to use in the outdoors. Mustang Floater has come out with a very unique item. They have come out with a floating system that is specifically tailored for women with adjustable straps on the hips that fit most of our curves. The jacket itself is lined with neoprene as are the knees for the pants. So you may still think it's a man's world out there, but ladies with incredible products like these, it's only a matter of time. This is Holly Chow Lovell with the Outdoor Journal. Ladies, enjoy the outdoors. Snakes excite the general public more than any other creature in the animal kingdom. Maybe it's the curiosity, the repulsion, or maybe just good old-fashioned fear. Regardless, whenever there's a snake exhibit and a snake story, it's sure to draw a crowd. And today's no exception. In this case, the exhibit is a thousand western diamondback rattlesnakes in the holding pit, and the story is about some crazy TV host looking for a major adrenaline rush. This is it. The only thing that's keeping me from fainting right now, folks, is the fear of falling down. Yet, for some bizarre reason, my confidence grows by the second. Having been properly prepared for this walk on the wild side and witnessing the predictability of this terrifying creature, I'm feeling relatively comfortable. Well, as comfortable as anybody could feel knowing that the only thing between me and a lethal dose of venom are these thin nylon shell chaps. By the way, the lethal dose is one drop of venom per 150 pounds of body weight. The way I figure it, folks, there's enough poison in here to kill the entire crowd of last year's Super Bowl. My next step is an actual field trip to confront these poisonous predators in their own elements. Knowing a lot more about snakes, and in particular rattlesnakes, than I did before this trip, my fear is definitely starting to turn into respect. Believe it or not, these stealthy, no-legged creatures are really quite predictable. For example, knowing that they won't chase you down and that their striking distance is roughly half of their entire length allows me to feel quite at ease around them even out here in the natural environment. But make no mistake about it, cross that line and your insurance agent is going to have to pay back some commission. 
Speaking of which, I hope mine's not watching TV today. What makes this whole thing really incredible, folks, is that just a few short days ago, I couldn't even say the word snake without a chill running up and down my back. But this is nothing compared to what I'm about to attempt. But first, this week's off the beaten path. My flight destination is San Jose, Costa Rica. From San Jose, I took a commuter flight about a half an hour west to the Carrillo Beach Airstrip on the Pacific coast near the Nicoya Peninsula. While there, I stayed at the luxurious Hotel Guanamar. This picturesque sand harbor offers miles of pristine beaches and some of the best sail fishing in the world. Being so close to the equator, Costa Rica enjoys the advantage of the perfect tropical climate. Even during the rainy season, which is May to November, a Costa Rican morning will more than likely be bright and sunny. The peak tour season is December to April. If there was ever an ultimate fishing adventure that I would recommend to someone, the Pacific Ocean off Costa Rica would definitely be right up there. The scenery is incredible, the weather is fantastic, and the fishing is phenomenal, especially for sailfish. Anyone who's ever caught a sailfish knows that there's not many other inhabitants of the ocean that come even close to the total package of the sail. The fun starts as soon as you set out the lines. You see, surface fishing is the most effective and, of course, the most exciting way of trying to latch on to one of these babies. When they're hungry, they'll chase and slash at anything that moves on the surface. Once hooked, a sailfish really shows its colors. It rips through the water, pulls like a tractor, and leaps like there's no tomorrow. The exact reasons why they're so sought after worldwide. This is tough. This is amazing fishing. The way these people do this on these boats is nothing like you've ever seen before. The professionalism and yet the mayhem at the same time is crazy. We have about eight lines that on the back, three or four fish sometimes at the same time. And it's just nuts. These guys know exactly what they're doing. Oh, look, he's way out there. What a powerhouse of a fish. As you can see, these sailfish are not real fond of being hooked and hauled in. And they're even more aggressive when grabbed by the bill. I don't know how a person can even hang on for a few seconds with this kind of thrashing power. A sail may look pretty scrawny, but it's all muscle. You gotta throw them back though. It's a feeling of self-satisfaction you won't find anywhere else. And since it's so satisfying, why not give her another shot? Ah, oh, look at that thing, way out there still. Oh, oh beautiful. Beautiful. Ah, oh, baby, I love you. Oh, look at these jumps. I have got a ton of life. Probably the hardest part of this is you got to keep the level line going with your thumb as you're fighting the fish, so the reel, the line doesn't spool up with the reel. We got a 50 pound line on this. You got to push that back and forth, and you'll forget every time until your your help here tells you to do it. That's why I got my buddy here. She's gonna help me along here. Oh. There he is, yes! Oh yeah, baby! Oh, that was gorgeous. That's worth it all right there. That is worth it all right there. Oh, look at that. The hand signals the guys give the boat operator is crucial at this point. Uh-oh, we're gonna get a jump. Oh no. Well, 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 I'm trying to wipe the sweat off my brow and she's telling me to reel at the same time. Whoosh! Hey, hey, hey. Whoa! Hang on. Oh, that's a beautiful look at that thing. Look at that thing, folks. Oh, look at this thing. What a gorgeous fish. What a gorgeous fish. Well, oh, look at the size of that sail compared to your arm. Oh, okay, folks, he's going to throw her back for us. Look at that. Oh, what a magnificent fish. Thanks, buddy. Go for it. He'll resuscitate that fish whenever he can. He'll build up some speed here, get some water flowing through their lungs. That fish will have no problem taking off. Come on, babe. 
The guy's got more, more nerve than I do, hanging out like that with a fish that size in his hands. Look at the color on that back. Absolutely incredible. Beautiful. Good work, buddy. Woo. I am exhausted. Totally done. My arms, my forearms are gone. They are. I need a drink of water. Agua. Agua. Por favor. Having rubbed elbows with over a thousand poisonous rattlesnakes in the pit, and actually catching some out in the wild, the boys figured I was now ready for the gold. Okay, yeah, I think we're nearly here. All right. Well, you just gotta watch where you're walking and, and be calm, just take your time. And well, if there's one thing easy. I've learned the last uh, little while in, in the pit there with all the snakes, is the calm <laughs> stuff, okay? You've definitely impressed upon me that you can't panic. That's right. Don't and I panic. Will not panic. Don't panic. I mean, if, you, if you see one, you stand still and everything's okay. fine, you know? Um, <clears throat> we'll go up now, there. Now, do you normally find them out this far? Well, a lot of times this time of day, you know, they'll be laying out right in front. You never can tell. Well, if you don't mind, boys, I'm just going to have a little peek before I come hey, up there. Hey, right there. Right there. Is there we one got, there? Yeah, we got one. We got one right, right there. Hello. I don't okay. like the way he's looking at you. Well, he's moving slow. Whoa, baby. Grab him. Get him. Get him. I think we got him. You got him? Okay. I think, well, that's a heavy snake. Yeah, get him Get him back over that way. That'd be nice. <laughs> there, he's rattling now. All right. All right. Okay. I think we're okay. You ready? Can I get down right down here? Yeah. See him right there? Yep, there he is, way in the back. Okay, now, now we're going to... Now, what are we going to do with right, we got to crawl in here, uh -huh. and then once you kind of get past this place right here, you can kind of stand up, kind of stoop over, and there's a pipeline right in the middle of it. This is an old tunnel. It goes plumb through this mountain, uh -huh. and, they, and they'll just den up. They'll be right along the edges uh -huh. or right under that pipe. Okay. That's where the holes are. Okay. And, and they're liable to be anywhere, so we got to be cautious, you know, and go slow. Okay, what are we going to do? I'm going to ease on in here and make sure we're clear, and then you come in behind me, okay? All right. And I'm going to bring, bring the box in behind me, too. You're going to drag the box in behind you? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, because we need them in here. Oh, man. Let me get this right. What you're telling me is we're going to take one of them down with us. Well, yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Lamerl, if somebody had told me a couple of days ago that I would be crawling into a den full of rattlesnakes with a couple of cowboys, I'd have said they'd been crazy. We've done crazier things than Yeah, this. I suppose. And it won't be the uh -huh. last time I do something like this either. Yeah. Oh, man. God almighty. You better get in here, because I got one right here on the side of the wall. Hey, yeah, here. Buddy, <laughs> Look at Whoa, that. Whoa, look here. I think come on, Rodney, come on in here so we can feed you these things. <sighs> All right, yeah. Angel, yeah, see him right there? Yeah. Ooh, that is That's one big one right there, man. That's good. Let me get over here behind you. You got him? I think so, buddy. All okay, right. we're pretty close quarters here, though. Yeah, I know. You, you got him? Yeah, I got right. him. Right. I'm going to try and slide him. Make sure you don't... No, he's not going You got away. him? Yeah. All right, bring him around. You got him. You got him. Oh, okay. man. You got him mad, all right. He is upset at me, let me tell right, you. Put him, put him in the box. Put him in the box. Okay, hang on. Put him in the box. Pull him in, buddy. That is one big oh, rattlesnake. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Get in there. Get him down. All right. Let him go. Let him go. Let him go. Let him go. You got his head? Let him go. All right, oh, the, other, the other buddy's coming out. All right. I got okay. him. Close Shut him up. Oh. Woo! Damn. All right. Man! <laughs> Woo. You boys are crazy. Right. Now we we ain't back to the big part yet. We got to get on down a little bit further and find find some more. The biggest. All right, let's let's go do it there. because All if right, I sit here much longer, I'm going the other way. All right, if we find anything, we'll just bring the box. 
Now, you said there's you, nothing up above, right, to worry about? Anything? Well, not, not right here. See that rafter up above us? Yeah. Listen, right, listen, listen, listen. Okay. I hear oh, some. Oh, boys. Oh, boys. I hear them. I hear. Okay, right up there. Where, okay, where, where, got, where? Right here on that side of this timber right here. Okay. We need that, he, we're gonna need up, that box. We need up. that box. Okay, hang Rodney, on. Rodney, you got the box? Yeah. Okay, let me see the tongue. Look at this. Look oh, at that. Oh, no, look at the size of that Man, thing. Man, this ain't crawling up the wall. Okay, hold on now. Okay, you're going to have to put him right in? Yeah. Whoa, oh, I whoa. don't like I don't like the way he's looking there, buddy. <laughs> oh, son. Whoa. Right, there's another. Here, you can, get, oh, you, can get, that. you can get this one. You get this one. Here, here, here. You hold on. Okay. Where are right. we? Hang on. What do we got here? Let me get him right here. Oh, oh, look this, at this the size guy. of that. Oh, here. There's one. Grab him. Right, right there on the... Right there. Is you that good? It? Yeah. There's, oh, what's another one? Look at the size of that one up Pull top. Pull him out. Pull him out. Oh, man. God, dog. Wait a minute. He's Hang in that box. Look at this. Look at this in here. You look at that one. I got... Close that up. Close that up, buddy. Look, look, oh, look. Man. <laughs> this baby here is crawling up the wall here. Okay, what do you want me to do? Just grab him right there? Yeah, right there. Grab him. I got him, buddy. Pull him out. Oh, man. oh, are you kidding me? That's a big snake. Look at Whoa. the size of that snake. <laughs> push him in. Push him in. Close that thing. Get him. Get him. Get in there. All right. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Let me make sure. Is there anything up there? Boys. Boys, hang on. Before you go any farther, uh -huh. I'd like to play with you here all day. But... No, you mean, I've had my thrill, guys. You sure you don't want to go on? I've had my thrill, boys. Huh? <laughs> Trust no, me. No, no, really. We, we still got 300 more feet here. I have had my right. fill. <laughs> oh. Buddy. Oh, man. You boys did it. Thank you. Thank you. <sighs> you enjoy that? Oh, enjoy. I don't know whether enjoy is the right word for this. Come on down here, guys. And, Hey, me... Oh, here's your hat. Thank you. Oh, man. Rodney just asked if I enjoyed that. Buddy, <laughs> I don't know whether enjoyment is a, a real Woo! good term to use here. What we just did, folks, we mentioned before we did, is not something that everybody wants to try at home. Guys, can I just get you to reiterate what I just said? I mean, it looked, you made it look fairly easy. I felt real comfortable in there because I knew I had you guys with me. Well, most of the time, most of the time a rattlesnake den is, is not like this. You don't just crawl up in them. I mean, this, this is an exceptional place. We've got places all on this mountain over here where you can just go in in small dens. You know, I, I'm, I'm more confident working those than crawling in this hole right here, but I mean, this is better than a roller coaster right here. It's a thrill that you can't get no price for. I'll tell you what though, boys, it worked. It's good. I feel good about it. I'm not, I'm not gonna say that I'm not afraid of snakes anymore. I won't say that. But I found a, a whole new respect for him and a whole new understanding. And uh, the next time out, I'm out in the field and I run into one of those critters out in the field, I'm going to deal with it a lot differently. It's a little, li little, <laughs> little bit you. easier after this. Thanks it? a lot, Bert. Good job. Thank man. you. Good job. And that's this week's Outdoor Journal. Jo join us next week and uh, who knows what we'll be chasing. <laughs> Take me home, boys. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs>